Hello everyone, this is Robert Burke, and today I'm very excited to be able to show you a brand new game coming out from WizKids called OP Arena. It's an epic battle royale of absurd proportions, and it only takes about 30 minutes to play. The game comes with 84 different characters that you're looking at here. We like to call them dudes. Uh, and they come in six different classes. Humans, animals, monsters, mythicals, mechs, and undead. What really makes the game unique are the insane special abilities that you'll see on the dude cards. These are all over the top and completely overpowered. Each player is going to take their own set of components to start the game with, including crystal gems in one color, a scoring marker in the same color that goes on the score track, a nerf token, a shield token, three white reroll cubes, and then a die in the same player color. Then each player is going to draw three cards from the dude deck. You can see I've drawn Pirate Taco, Helpless Bunny, and the Kraken. Not too shabby. So I've got the table set up here like a game has been going on, and you can see I've got two dudes down. I've got Coal-Fired Robot of Doom and Filthy Zombies. So let me show you how to read these cards, these dude cards. On the bottom right, you're going to have the hit points of that dude. This dude can take seven damage until he is dead. As you can see here, my dudes on the table have already taken damage. My Coal Fire Robot of Doom has taken four, and my Filthy Zombies have taken one. And that damage was inflicted by the red player. And I know that because the damage crystals are red. So for sake of example, let's say the blue player did three damage to my coal-fired robot of doom. He now has seven damage total, which equals the hit points. So this dude is dead. It's been killed. Now you don't add damage over the max damage a dude can take. So you could not add eight. If you did, if the blue player did four damage, he would only add three. So since the blue player did the final damage that killed it, he gets three victory points and moves up on the track three. Whoever did the most damage at the time of death, which is the red player, because the red player has four damage and the blue player has three. So the red player gets two VP and will go up two on the track. The blue player did the second most damage, so will go up one VP. So this is important. You really want to time your damage to maximize your victory points. So red's going to go up two, and blue is going to go up one more for having the second most damage. So for the sake of example, let's say the Coal-Fired Robot of Doom had three blue damage and three red damage, and I added the last damage to kill it. And yes, you can attack your own dudes in OP Arena, and sometimes it behooves you to do so. Since I did the killing blow, I'm going to score three victory points for myself as the yellow player. Blue and red are tied for having the most damage on that dude at the time of death, so they will both get two victory points. Since I have the second most damage with one, I will get one victory point. So I'm going to score four, and the blue and red player are going to score two. Alrighty, let me show you how to read these cards. So you'll see on the top left of this card is a red box with a number in it. That is your basic attack. Every dude, or almost every dude, has a basic attack. The two is the number you need to roll to use your basic attack or higher. So if I rolled a six, for example, I could place it there because it's higher than two. If it's equal to two, you can also place it there. The number also tells you how much damage you're going to do if you place your power die there. So the Kraken has a five. So if I rolled a six, I could place it there and do five damage. If I use the Pirate Taco, I would only do two damage. So it's higher to hit with a higher number, but if you do hit, you're going to do more damage with that dude. You'll also find many of your dudes have an orange box with a number on the top left. This is your skill power. It works the same way as damage, but instead of doing damage, you're going to take ner nerf tokens or shield tokens from the supply and add them to your personal pool. 
We'll talk about those in a bit. But for the Kraken, for example, if I rolled a 4 and I put the 4 on the 2, I would get 2 tokens of any combination. If I put it on Pirate Taco, I would get 3 tokens in any combination from the supply. You'll also notice both of these dudes have a blue explanation point icon on the top. These icons indicate that these dudes have a persistent ability that's always in effect. If your dude has a die symbol in the top right, that indicates it has a reactive effect that triggers when any other player rolls that number on their power die. Check your special abilities on the bottom of your card to check reactive and pers persistent effects. You'll see the Kraken has a special condition written here that says this dude can only be played on your turn. Most dudes can be played on any player's turn during the call for dudes phase, but the Kraken can only be played on your turn. You'll see his first special ability is release the Kraken. So whenever you play the Kraken, he's going to do one damage to every dude in play. Then you're going to roll the die. And if you roll a four or higher, you bring the Kraken back to your hand. That means you can, as long as you roll a four, you can continue to bring him out and damage everybody. If you don't roll a four, the Kraken stays in play, but now you can use to the briny depths with you ability. When any player rolls a six, the Kraken takes them under and kills one of their dudes. So that's a great way to get some points. An important thing to note here is that any ability that says kill kills the dude outright. It doesn't matter how much damage is on that dude. It's dead. So let's look at a persistent ability. Pirate Taco has extra guacamole. You can see the icon. Extra guacamole allows you to re-roll one time on your turn. If you do, though, you have to keep the second roll. So this is very convenient to roll a better number without having to use a re-roll token. Many special abilities will have a number and a box where you place your die. So you can see here for pistolas, you have to roll a four or higher. And if you place your die there, the special ability is triggered. So I could place a five on the basic attack, the skill token, or here on pistolas. And that does three damage each to up to two different dudes. So that's a pretty good ability. I'm doing some significant damage to two dudes if I place my power die here, if I roll a four or higher. So there you go. You know how to use your dudes. All right, now we're going to go through a turn. On your turn, you're going to complete six different phases. It's all explained in the rule book, but it's very simple, much simpler than it sounds. I'm going to walk you through all six phases right now. Phase one is discard a dude. You're limited to two dudes in play at a time unless you have a special ability that lets you exceed that number. So in this case, I have two dudes in play, but I want to play one of these dudes from my hand. So in order to do that, I have to discard a dude. If a dude has no damage, it's easy. Just discard the dude and you're opened up a free spot. However, if the dude has damage like mine do, I have to award victory points for every damage to the player who has the damage on the dude I discard. If it was my own damage, like if these zombies had two of my own, I do not get victory points for my own damage. However, if I discard these zombies, the red player gets one victory point. And you would have to move up the red player one point on the scoring track. But now I've got a space for my helpless bunny. Phase two, call for dudes. This is the phase when you have to say aloud, call for dudes. Then any player can place a dude in play where they have room. Now I don't have room here, but let's, if I did, I could play pirate taco, for example. Phase three, play a token. So to start the game, every player gets one nerf token and one shield token, and you can earn them through game effects. Here's what they look like. Nerf token is a long kind of crime scene tape looking thing, and they go right over special abilities that you want to nerf in the game. Uh, once you nerf an ability, it's gone. You are nerfing that ability, it's too overpowered for you. Now it's important to note you can only nerf special abilities, not basic abilities that are on the top of the card, 
only the abilities on the bottom. Now a shield token you place on any dude in play, and it protects that character from being nerfed. If that character or dude is nerfed, you remove the shield token instead of nerfing the ability. So if you got a dude you really want to keep an ability for, put a shield token on it. Phase four, roll your power die. Yeah, it's as simple as it sounds. Just roll your die and see what you get. Now, if you happen to have any re-roll tokens remaining, the white cubes, you can spend one to re-roll it. But you only get three for the whole game, so use them sparingly. Phase five, place your rolled power die. So the number you roll is going to dictate where you can place your die. It has to be equal to or greater than the numbers on your card. Places you can play them will have square icons, a basic attack, or a skill token attack, or a special ability on the bottom. So in this case, I placed it on the basic attack of the coal-fired robot of doom, and I will do damage equal to that basic attack number. So in this case, I'm going to put three damage on undead chicken cow because I don't like it. So remember, it's not the number you roll, not four damage, but the number printed on the card you're attacking with, which was three. Phase six, cleanup. So the last phase, you can decide if you want to discard any of the dudes in your hand. I'm going to discard Pirate Taco, for sake of example. Then you can draw back up until you have three cards in hand. Now, there's different effects in the game that will let you steal and take cards from the discard pile or draw more cards, for example. So if you already have more than three, you don't get to draw any. So that's about it. Once you complete your turn, play passes to the next player in clockwise order, and they complete their turn, and it keeps going around the table until one player has reached 30 or more victory points, and that player is the winner. The game is just chaotic fun. It is silly, and what really makes it fun is all these combos that happen when different abilities trigger other abilities that trigger abilities, and it can kind of chain together and create just some hilarious moments. And since the game is all about victory points, you really don't care when a, one of your dudes dies. Uh, you're kind of excited to get the next dude in play anyway. So really planning and timing it right when and where you're going to do damage to really maximize those victory points is what the game is all about. And one thing I haven't mentioned is you're not allowed to read the abilities of other players' dudes. But as you learn the game, you'll start to know which abilities trigger other abilities and how you can maximize that and really crush some noobs. Hope you enjoy the game. It's OP Arena.